Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We love this DeWalt DW735 13 inch planer, but there's one area that just really bugs me, and that is the standard readout, as clear as it is, is problematic. It would do much better with a digital readout that can be viewed just standing in normal position. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to install one of these and why you should consider upgrading your planer with one. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. We love investing in good tools that are gonna last a long time. And certainly this DeWalt uh, DW735 looks like it's gonna really hold up for a long time. We certainly like the way it runs so far. But there's one area that's a deficit, and it's not just this planer, it's other uh, types of planers and thickness sanders and those sort of things, and that is the cutting gauge right here. Now this gauge, as you can see, is very clear, it's very visible, it's up in the front, but it is subject to an error that, hey listen my fellow geeks, this is the real term, parallax error which is what happens when you look at a gauge indicator against a gauge and look at it from different angles. So if I look straight dead level at this, straight across, but then I come up higher and I look down at an angle and my viewpoint is higher, you can see the apparent reading on the gauge on the rule is significantly different than it is from different angles. Well, the only way that you can actually get a true reading with this kind of gauge is to be perpendicular to the rule so that the top, the line that goes across the top of the indicator under the rule is 90 degrees to the rule. Well, how do you do that? Well, it means bending down pretty low every time to do that. And I'm not just being lazy, I just want to put some real accuracy into this tool and the others like it. And therefore, we chose to go with the Wixie RW510 Digital Planer Readout. Now this is a great little tool and it's about, at the time of the filming, about $80. And that's what it comes in, uh, just a kit form. This is the Type 2. There was an earlier version they had out, the Type 1. The two main differences were uh, the type of battery system. This one runs on three AAAs. Uh, the other one ran on a disc, a single disc battery. This has a longer battery life. Number two, the angle, if you see the display on the top, it tends to be a little bit more angled, makes it easier to read when you're standing at the operator position. But let's go ahead and walk you through how to install this. It's pretty simple. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and calibrate it to make sure that we're getting exactly the thickness of stock that's indicated in the readout here. Let's go ahead and get going. So here's the tools that you're going to need to accomplish the task. One, you'll need a drill motor with an adjustable chuck where you'll be drilling holes on the front to put mounting screws in. Number two, you need a good straight edge of some kind. We'll point that out in a little bit why you need that. You need three AAA batteries. This unit does not come with them. And you wouldn't have a way for them to know whether they are fresh anyway. So you supply your own three AAA batteries. You need, need a seven millimeter nut driver, and you're going to need a piece of flat wood stock to plane and to calibrate the machine. That's all you need. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the unit is unplugged. Always make sure it's unplugged. Did I say make sure that your unit's unplugged before you start this? And the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and take off this indicator right here and keep the screws handy. Be sure to keep those screws, you're gonna need them in a little bit. Next, go ahead and set the turret to three quarter inches and you'll need to make sure that the height of the head of the cutter is above three quarter before you set it to three quarter. Now, go ahead and lower the planer down to three quarters inches. Once it hits a stop, don't force it any further. All right, let's go to the next step. Let's go ahead and get this unpackaged.
there's an adjustment nut at the bottom or a welded on nut here that what you're going to do is take one of the provided jam nuts. And in this case, we're just gonna use the short one. We'll give that a try to begin with. Insert several turns. You're not actually gonna use this as an adjustment, but it gives you a place to rest the bracket on. The next step is to simply take the whole unit and place it over the existing scale. Now, what we're looking to do here, you'll see down at the bottom, the nut that we, or the screw we put in it, we ended up using the medium size one. And what we're doing here is you need to get a block of wood or something below here. And the idea is to rest this on top of it, but use a straight edge, bring this over, and raise it until that foot is in line with the adjacent planer bed table. So let's go ahead and take a shot at that. Make sure before you go on to the next step that this is absolutely level with the adjacent side or a little bit higher. This piece is a little bit higher. Make sure it is not lower than the table or you'll end up with calibration problems later on. All right, now let's go to the next step. After you remove this and you've got your setting where it needs to be, carefully pull this away from, remove the paper backing off the adhesive tabs, and then carefully place this back in position, making sure to maintain the right position above the table. Press it in place. Use the frame back to press it in place, not the front gauge. There you go, now we can remove that. It's now in place, but do not rely only on the tape to hold it in place. We now need to mount it in with screws. All right, the next step is you need to get this front scale and the indicator head off of it, the display off of here. And how we do that is in the back here, you can see this whole item slides up and down as kept taut by this spring. So what you need to do is pull that spring off. It's really easy to get around there. And when you do that, now this rides free. You can pull this up, pull it out of the indicator display head, and then you have these two pieces. Let's set them aside for this next step. Go ahead and then chuck up the provided 3.5 millimeter drill bit. And now you have two holes that are already in the base plate of this. So let's go ahead and just drill straight in. Use your seven millimeter nut driver to go ahead and drive these in. Very nice, that is very much a fix there. All right, now we'll go ahead and reinstall this back in. Push the spring back over here. Lower this partially in. Put the display head back on and slide it down till it goes through the front groove and it rides freely. All right, go ahead and grab the spring from the back here, pull it out, rotate the head just slightly and put it around there. Now this operates as it should. For this particular model, the DeWalt 735, DW735, you're gonna use this one supplied bracket plus what they call a double washer. And we're gonna use the original screws that was for the indicator and we'll go ahead and attach that back on. Let's do that now. Leave them loose like this so they're easily adjusted. Our next step is to remove this screw right here, reinsert it through this bracket, lower it, and connect that bracket down below. We're gonna take this M6 bolt along with this nut, a little bit of thread lock on that, and loosely put these together. There we go. Okay, we're gonna do our first rough calibration. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go, at, since this screw on the side is loose, we're gonna go ahead and move the top of the case until it indicates three quarter inch, which is what we did on the turret over on the side when we originally set this. Now go ahead and take the side screw and put it in tightly, and then go ahead and connect up or tighten the rest of the linkages down here. 
Then let's go ahead and finish and tightening this up and then let's move down here and tighten all these linkages up as well. So tighten that really into final position. And then we're gonna reach in here as well and get those all tightened in as well. Now just a bit of warning right here. At this step, you need to make sure that this will ride up and down cleanly. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and adjust this and you can see it's coming up just nicely and it's going back down. But if yours is bound up or something's pulled out of alignment, then you'll need to adjust these linkages and all this until this rides smoothly. All right, go ahead and remove this cover off and let's go ahead and install the batteries. Hey, bonus! It only takes two batteries, not the three that I stated earlier. Let's go ahead and power this baby up. Automatically the top came on and we're now ready to calibrate. I've set the height here to run about one and a half slightly under it. We're gonna run this two by four through it for our next calibration step. All right, we're now ready to calibrate and we're gonna do that in two simple steps. So first of all, I've hooked up the planer to a vacuum system, so it's running right now. We are gonna go ahead and turn on this display on the on off button. And at this point, just disregard what's ever on here because this has not been calibrated at all. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run this board through there uh, and then use it to calibrate. So it doesn't matter what height you're, or what thickness you're gonna plane this at at this point. Uh, just make sure you're not taking off too much at one time. I'm choosing to use the number two setting for rough dimensioning. Let's go ahead and turn on the planer. Now we're gonna take that same board. Do not change the setting on the planer. Lift this right here. Put the board you just planed on top of the bottom foot and let that come down to it. Now hold this right here where it says on off calibrate. Hold it for three to five seconds until it zeroes out. Now you can see we're set at zero with this here. Now hold on to the top, remove the board, and let the plunger come down. And what you'll find is the board thickness is 1.38 inches, and that's what this was cut at. So now at this point, we can raise and lower it to whatever we want. So let's go ahead and take it up, let's say to one and a half inches. And there you can see right now on the display, 1.5 inches or one half inch. So if I run a board through that, that's gonna be set. This is a great improvement. There's no parallax error, and you can simply look at this display and move it up and down. You can also visit wixie.com and check out their FAQ pages for all of the different planers and devices that this unit will work on. And then you can also uh, see any troubleshooting guides, FAQs, and if there are an advanced uh, functionalities you want to use such as using this right here like we just did to measure the thickness of an existing board you can do that all that is available right there at wixie.com one other resource that you want to be aware of is this little simple installation guide that shows different common planers and common approaches to putting this together this really helped in the installation of this with us and you can simply go to the link that's shown below in the description to get that download and it'll really help ease this. Even though we showed you how to do it, you'll now have a printed resource that you could go through one by one. There's another great tool in the shop, the bandsaw that can really benefit with aftermarket upgrades like we just did for this planer. Check out this video where we tell you about six great upgrades you can put in your bandsaw that are not that expensive, but really jump up the functionality and the accuracy of the bandsaw. And while you're at it, check out this other video that we made for you that YouTube thinks is just right. Until the next time, this is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.